It's Friday the 17th of July and at the end of this week you are very welcome to join me for this short time of daily prayer here at St Paul's Knightsbridge. At this short office the reader is Kimball Bailey. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Jesus, Saviour of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Saviour and mighty Deliverer. Save us and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. The appointed psalm is Psalm 119, verses 129 to 136. Your testimonies are wonderful. Therefore my soul keeps them. The opening of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and draw in my breath. As I long for your commandments, turn to me and be gracious to me. As is your way with those who love your name, order my steps by your word. And let no wickedness have dominion over me. Redeem me from earthly oppressors, so that I may keep your commandments show the light of your countenance upon your servants and teach me your statutes my eyes run down with streams of water because the wicked do not keep your law glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be for ever amen A reading from the Epistle to the Ephesians. Now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances so that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near, for, through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Monday's child is fair of face. Tuesday's child is full of grace. Wednesday's child is full of woe. Thursday's child has far to go. Friday's child is loving and giving. Saturday's child works hard for a living. And the child that is born on the Sabbath day is bonny and blithe and good and gay. Well, do the dates, the days and the seasons in which we are born influence the way we turn out, personally speaking? As a child born on the Sabbath day, I hope so. But do the days of the week we are born on influence us? Despite my mother's sudden and unexpected passion for a book entitled Linda Gottman's Sun Signs in the enormous red book which arrived in our home, which honestly I think she read more for amusement than as a serious study, I've never really had any affinity with anything mystical, astrological, or heavenly, and I've always thought that horoscopes are a bit strange and slightly nonsensical, although I note that I had dinner the other evening with a friend, 
friend I hugely respect, and several times in the course of dinner, she leant forward, looked across the table and said with intensity, see a Scorpio. Whether heavenly seasons influence us, whether the day of the week on which we are born shapes us is a moot point. But we certainly shape our days. Normally, in the rhythm of our daily lives, each day of the week has a different feel. And one of the real challenges, I think, of this past period of home working has been that our rhythm and our routine has largely gone. And that for many people, every day has felt the same as every other. Traditionally, in Christian life, for Christian people, the week has had a rhythm, the major drumbeat being Sundays. But other days, too, have had their particular significance. Friday, today, has always tended to be a simpler day of the week because it is the day on which our Lord hung upon the cross. And so it's tended to be a day on which Christians have abstained in solidarity with their Lord's suffering. Fish on Fridays, not meat, especially during holy seasons. And in many cathedrals and greater churches where there is a daily choral service on a Friday, there is no organ. It is a plain day. And the choices of the texts for this office are influenced by the same thing with their references to Christ's passion. I wonder what disciplines you have to shape your week. And in particular, do you keep Friday as a day of simplicity? It's a venerable and a really worthwhile custom and a tradition that can help us in our own daily lives to identify even more closely with the person of Jesus Christ. Whatever mad mystical ideas people may have about us being shaped by the days and by the celestial seasons, what is absolutely certain is that this sort of habit will shape us and will shape us in godliness and for good. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Fashion in me, Lord, eyes within my eyes, so that with new eyes I may contemplate your divine sacrifice. Create in me a pure heart, so that through the power of your spirit, I may breathe in your salvation. We pray for the church in all lands and for all Christian people. We pray for our bishop, Sarah, for our sister and partner parishes, and for our life together. We pray for a deepening of our devotion, and that God will draw us back to our first love in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world and for their peace, for our leaders, for all in positions of influence and authority, for those especially who guide the life of the media, for those who speak words that many listen to and write words that shape the hearts and minds of our people. Father, make us wise, help us to choose the right words and to know when to keep silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all who've asked us to pray for them. We pray for the sick in body, mind and spirit. We remember those of our own congregation who are burdened in any way. We pray for all who are bereft and filled with sadness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
and among those who have died, we pray for Patrick Elwood and today especially for Father Bill Scott who died early this morning. We give thanks for his love shared with us and for his preaching and for his journeying with us as a fellow disciple of Christ. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for all the benefits that you have won for us, for all the pains and insults that you have borne for us. Most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. We pray together as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ our Saviour give us peace. Amen.